Hello and welcome to our lecture on Anne Rasimha's poem, The Fiddler of Kolopitiya. We will first be starting off with a reading of this poem. The Fiddler of Kolopitiya. He sat untroubled on a crowded pavement between the rough planks stall of pineapples and salt dark dry fish. His twisted back against the hard brick wall and playing a scratchy tune upon his violin. He was so old, his bony hands were trembling, and all the skin hung loose from off his neck like chicken skin, sat playing enclosed within the tune that only he could hear. The sound of passing traffic deadened his music. There he sat, so happily enclosed within the music, his cataract eye inver uh, turned inward to a place, and time only, music, only the music knew. His thin old eyelids shutting out the bowl that unassumingly and empty stood on the ground before him. Till the night of shuttered stall and neon lamplight, of empty paper bags blown by the wind into the garbage gutter, washed the street of life. And with a smile all sweet and innocent, so full of happiness, only the music knew. Upon the pavement stone, he laid his grizzled head to rest, hugging his past, his life, his violin, and silently the darkness covered him. Now let's go to the analysis of this poem. So first of all, if we try to understand the title, we know that a fiddler is basically a person who plays the violin. So Ranasimha here is referring to a fiddler whom she gazes at in the busy streets of Kolpiti or Kolpitiya, which is located in Colombo, Sri Lanka. So in this poem, the fiddler, as we know, is the focal or central point. However, his perspective is given through the poet's vantage point. So therefore, to a certain extent, we can say that there is an elitist case which the poet is subjecting the fiddler to. As there is evidently a huge discrepancy of class between the poet and the fiddler who is entertaining the crowd uh, for his livelihood, we have to continue in the same line of thought. So we can understand that Ranasimha is basically or merely observing him and presupposing and pondering upon his existence and state of mind in this poem. So critiques say that it comes across as patronizing and as an extremely elitist perspective where Ranasinger is merely categorically essentializing him from a superior point of view, considering the definite economical, contextual and class differences between them. So she starts off the poem with saying, he, start, he sat untroubled on the crowded pavement. So to her, he looks untroubled, right? From her vantage point of view, she perceives him as untroubled, but she doesn't really know this, right? So therefore, from the very beginning, we can say that it is problematic. Then she continues on to talk about him. Between the rough plant stall of pineapples and salt dried fish, uh, skipping a few lines, his, his, he was all old, his bony hands were trembling, and all the skin hung loose from his neck like chicken skin. Let's go to, just scroll to the beginning of the poem so that you can also follow with me. So it is very important that when we read these lines, we can understand that she's describing a lot of powerful visual images, right? So therefore, let's try to interpret these visual images. So these visual images that Ranasimha is incorporating here portray a very detailed and vivid picture of the fiddler in the minds of the reader. And we can interpret these images in different ways. Ranasimha talks about the fiddlers twisted back against the hard brick wall, him being so old, his bony hands were trembling, and how all the skin hung loose from his neck like chicken skin. 
emphasizing and accentuating the vivid physical markers of suffering and poverty that you can see in the figure. But despite his poor and destitute conditions, in Ranasinghe's observing gaze, she perceives he must find in happiness by being enclosed by his music. So if we interpret Ranasinghe's gaze as a very elitist as and patronizing one, uh, as certain, certain critics observe, we can perceive that her use of visual imagery like chicken skin to describe the destitute is problematic as she is deliberately subjecting him to dehumanization. That means that she's basically depriving him of his human qualities or characteristics and attributing animal-like qualities to him. And that is what she does by describing his skin as that of chickens. So in order to continue in this same line of thought, I also want to point out the class differences, the very clear and definite class differences between the fiddler and Ranasinghe. So considering all these, we can to a certain extent problematize Ranasinghe's gaze and say that she cannot presume to know the fiddler's state of mind and conditions because she does not truly understand him and that his perception is merely based on her observations. However, we can also interpret Ranasinghe's observations in a different way as well. So how can we do that? We can say that perhaps Ranasinghe is attempting to deliberately subject the fiddler to victimization. So this is because Ranasinghe herself comes from a context where as a Jew, she has experienced loss and suffering as her family was persecuted under the Nazi regime. So she has experienced that fear of being hunted, uh, feeling like a prey to the predator, and this notion of being victimized. She has first-hand experiences with that. So considering these, we can interpret that she's using these kinds of dehumanizing images and deliberately associating uh, then with the fiddler because she is aware or conscious of the fiddler's poor and deprived status. And then she finds similarities with him and that of her own past, right? So therefore we can say that she is using these images that can be associated with the state of victimhood in a deliberate way. And that is not to subject him to dehumanization. But that is just another way of interpreting her gaze, right? And then she continues on to say, his cataract eye turned invert, uh, turned invert to a place and time only music knew. His thin old eyelids shutting down the bowl that unassumingly and empty stood on the ground before him till the night of, of shuttered stall and neon lamplight of empty paper bags blown by the wind into the garbage gutter washed the street of life. And with a smile of sweet and innocent, so full of happiness, only the music knew. So we can say that she's observing the destitute of being happily enclosed uh, within his music. So she is interpreting that, or she is perceiving that the destitute, the fiddler, is happily enjoying his music. And maybe we can say that she's observing this perhaps out of the reflection, contemplation, and sympathy of the elite when seeing the suffering poor and destitute people at a passing distance. Because it says that even though his board is empty, he is still enjoying his music. So despite this positive value assessment attributed to music here, it is like Ranasinghe is directing her sympathy for the poor in this poem without truly understanding their pain, suffering, and misery. And also apart from that, throughout this entire poem, we can say that Ranasinghe records a series of street songs along with the music of the fiddler. So it is almost like Ranasinghe is recording the impulse of the street. 
And further notice how she starts the poem by referring to the noisy crowded pavement, the noises of the traffic which overwhelms his music. And as the poem develops, the music is given a center stage. And towards the end of the poem, so if you go towards the end, she says that, He laid his grizzled uh, head to rest, hugging his past, his life, his violin, violin, and silently the darkness covered him. So towards the end, you can see that the silence approaches. As the street sounds ebbs away, the fiddler also lays his head to rest as the night approaches, right? So therefore, to conclude this analysis in this poem, we have mainly looked at two ways in which we can interpret Ranasimha's gaze or perception of the fiddler. And we identified that these, we identified these as the elitist gaze on the poor and destitute fiddler from, uh, from a vantage point of view. And we also identified that this can be interpreted as an attempt to deliberately victimize the fiddler, considering that Ranasin herself has firsthand experiences with that of the state of victimhood. So this is where I'm going to stop my analysis of Ranasin Her's poem, The Fiddler of Polypitya. And in our next few lectures, we will be analyzing more poems by Ranasimha. Thank you very much for listening.